Good evening. Welcome to my channel. This is Canning with Kate and I'm Kate and I am here and I'm so glad that you are coming to join me tonight. Um, tonight is not going to be actually a canning video. Um, I have been a little in my A for a little bit. Um, my family and I are getting ready to move in the near future and so I've actually kind of put a pause on all the canning and started eating through our our pantry or our pantry as some people like to say so I have not been doing a whole lot of canning lately but um, I wanted to share with you something that I have been doing on the regular lately that I have learned about in the past probably two months and so this is something that I have started doing with my family and since I'm not doing canning I thought that maybe I would bring you along on this journey so um, this is going to be a non-canning but a kefir video or a kefir I don't know some people say it differently I call it kefir but um, I'm really excited that we have started doing this um, in our family and the reason that I have started making kefir and serving it to our family for probably the past I want to say on the on regular for the past four four or five weeks um, is because our daughter needed healing with her gut um, she had developed some autoimmune issues that we needed to fix and I didn't want to do a whole lot of um, other pharmaceuticals and the doctors had told us that we needed to put her on steroids and and all this stuff and for our family I just um, my husband and I decided that that was just not something that we felt comfortable doing for our daughter. Um, so I really started going on this journey of learning um, homeopathic and natural remedies for healing. And I learned that her issue comes from a gut issue. And so I was working with, we've cut back a lot on gluten we're not perfect she still gets some gluten in her day in her life but we've cut back a lot and I'm starting to use einkorn um, which is a much um, lower gluten content and I've actually oh, look, <laughs> I've actually made two loaves of einkorn bread um, and this stuff is good enough to pass <laughs> let's just say that my kids like it they will eat it and um, it's not dense enough to like put as bricks on a house it is it has really good flavor and my kids will eat it so that is a win for this mom okay so I've started using einkorn but um, the biggest issue was just working to heal her gut and um, so after taking out the gluten, I started thinking, okay, well, there's got to be something else. Um, and so I found that there was uh, this kefir, and I started really looking into kefir a lot. And um, I found out that it is so incredibly easy to make. And um, there's just, there, I mean, it's, it's stupid easy, really. And it, it sounds like it would be a lot of work and a lot of effort but it's it's not and um, it's so I've been giving it to the kids a lot um, almost daily missed a couple days here and there but pretty much daily for the past few weeks and um, my son has said that he's actually started sleeping better um, I know that even though I might not be able to see the actual physio physiological changes I know that it's doing good things inside of them and my kids have all started you know getting colds but it never actually came to be a full blown out cold mm -hmm. so um, in my opinion I it's working right because my kids have not gotten sick since they started drinking this regularly and so um, for me it's good enough to continue and as I've been going on, I've learned a lot more about how to make it really tasty um, and to just make it workable for this family. So I'm going to show you. Um, right here, 
first. You don't need hardly anything that you don't already have in your kitchen. So this is a half gallon jar. Um, you can also use a quart jar or whatever you have, but for our family, we are starting to need, because we have six, we need a half gallon jar. Um, and this kefir has already been made and there's some frozen strawberries in here and I'll explain that in a few minutes. All right, um, I have a stainless steel sieve. I have a measuring cup. You can also use a bowl. I used, let me show you. For a long time I was just using this to pour my kefir into. But then I got smart and I said, well, why not just put it into a measuring cup that has this little lip and then pour it into my jar that I'm gonna store my kefir in. And it's a lot easier to put my, my colander in. So um, anything glass, I say you're good to go. All right, now let me explain. This is my kefir. This is basically fermented dairy. Um, a lot of people are very um, concerned about leaving milk or dairy products overnight, um, but this is a fermented drink, so anything fermented is not going to go bad, um, especially for the short amount of time that we leave it. Um, so basically what you need to do is you need to get milk kefir um, Totally lost my train of thought, but milk kefir, um, and you can find it on Etsy. You can I, I don't know somebody that you know might have the kefir grains, um, and if somebody does, then maybe they'll give them to you because these things multiply like rabbits. Okay, if they are happy and healthy, you will have a crap load of kefir grains in no time at all. So. Anybody who already has kefir going, they might be totally willing to let you have some, or you can find some um, for sale on Etsy. I know that um, people sell them on Facebook. So just just work and, and try and find somebody that you know, or go other routes to find kefir grains. Okay, you wanna find milk kefir grains. They are also water kefir grains. I don't have any experience with those, only with the milk. So. Um, I've got probably two tablespoons of milk kefir grains in these and I put skim milk in here last night um, probably around six o'clock last night and I put my grains on the bottom and then I just poured in skim milk you can use any kind of milk that you want you can use whole milk two percent one percent skim um, whatever your whatever your choice, that's totally fine. I've also used raw milk with this and it's totally fine. Um, so, and I just filled it all the way up to the top of my quart mason jar and I put the cap loosely on. You don't want it real tight because you want it to breathe, okay? This is fermenting, so you want the, the air in the gases to be able to get out of your jar. So don't tie it, don't um, put it on real tight, just loosely so that nothing can get in, okay? and then. I just put it on in my kitchen on a shelf for 24 hours and that's it. I just forget about it and leave it be. Now, okay, I don't know if you guys can see this. Okay, yep, okay, This these pockets right here are the whey pockets, okay? This lets me know that it has fermented enough. Um, there are times when I've actually left it for longer than 24 hours just because I've gotten busy or um, you know whatever has come up and it's actually gotten a lot more pockets on the bottom and that's totally fine the only difference is is that it might become a little bit more um, tart or a little bit more sour tasting the longer that you leave it some people prefer to leave it longer because the more that it sits the more that it ferments um, the more of the lactose that it eats okay because this is a live living culture it's a bacteria that um, is alive so um, it is you know eating and, and growing and producing and all the good stuff so I'm going to show you how to strain my milk kefir and then how to make more okay so 
here it is. I'm going to probably do this in like two, two parts because my, my colander is a little bit small. I have a wooden spoon. Um, you only want to use stainless steel to do this kind of stuff or like wood or um, glass or something because it is fermented. It can start to eat through the other stuff, okay? So you don't want that. All right, so I am just pouring, see, I poured about half of it in, and I'm just going to take this and stir the kefir round. Um, so the milk kefir um, aids in the healing of your gut, and so if you have any gut issues, this might really help you. I believe that it's helping my daughter. So I will absolutely continue to make this until the day I die. <laughs> and um, I found ways that really are amazing that the kids really enjoy drinking it. And that's all I need. Um, I don't drink it the same way that they do because I'm much more simple. And I am fine drinking it, you know, with without all the extras that I give to my kids. But basically for the kids, I will, I have four kids. So I put like one to one and a half cups of kefir in my blender. And then depending on kind of what they're feeling for that day, I've done uh, frozen peaches, which was not a hit. Um, they did not enjoy that. They kind of told me, don't do that again, mom. So that's not gonna happen again. But I've um, done frozen strawberries. I'm sure that you could totally do fresh strawberries, but um, since this is the middle of winter, fresh strawberries tend to be a little bit more on the pricey side. So I, I've done fresh strawberries with a splash of vanilla and some sweetener. Our family uses stevia. You could use monk fruit, honey, um, sugar if you want to do that, any of that to kind of sweeten it up and some ice and then just blend it up into a smoothie. The kids love that. Um, then I've also done, app, I've put an apple and a few tablespoons of peanut butter in it, which seems to be their favorite. And I just do the same thing, put some stevia, put a little splash of vanilla, put some ice in it, and um, just whiz it up and then I divide it between all four kids. And my husband loves it too. He, he says that the peanut butter one is his absolute favorite. So um, my daughter loves the strawberry. So we they all have their favorites and I'm happy to make them all. Um, and then what I do is just super duper simple. I just put mine in a cup and I put some greens powder in it and some baobab powder which is um, it's a powder that has a bunch of vitamin C and fiber and um, a whole bunch of other nutritions that are in the baobab powder which comes from the baobab tree in Africa um, and then I put some stevia in there and just blend it up a little bit with a with a milk frother and I just drink it like that that's it's fast, it's easy for me, um, and that's how I make sure that I get my kefir in there. All right, we're almost done. All right, so I'm gonna make sure I get all my kefir out of this jar. Um, I've also Heard that drinking kefir can lower blood pressure a lot um, maybe not a lot but it, it really helps to help you um, reduce your blood pressure if you have high blood pressure um, so I, I just feel like drinking kefir is a win no matter what and it's not going to hurt you it can only help uh, increase your health so that's why I've started doing this um, and like I said, it's stupid simple. So 
really all you got to do is make sure that you find some good healthy grains um, and then you're you're set I mean everything else is ridiculously easy it's um, something that is so easy to do for the health of your family and I, I truly I truly think that it's helped my kids stay healthy the past few weeks because they my my daughter was on the verge of a pretty bad cold recently and you know in the winter when kids get a cold they get a cold and they don't let go um, but she just had the sniffles and I just kept giving her the kefir and the sniffles went away it never turned into a full-blown cold and anybody who has ever dealt with a cold knows how hard that is to um, to keep away and to get rid of so all right I am pretty much done so see this took about let's see five or six minutes to do I'm going to show you what the keeper grains look like all right so they kind of look like cheese like kind of like cottage cheese a little bit there you go this is what a kefir grain looks like. And if they're healthy, if they're happy, if they're doing their job, then these guys are going to multiply like gangbusters. They're gonna multiply so fast. And um, what you can do with the extra grains is you can blend them up in your smoothies. There's nothing wrong with that and you're probably not gonna taste them. So you can just put like a tablespoon in your smoothie and blend them up. Um, so I'm done with this and you can also uh, dehydrate them if you have so many you can just put them like on a like a cookie sheet and just let them air dry and dehydrate um, and then you can you know package them with like a, a vacuum sealer or whatever and and then you'll have extra grains if you ever need them. Um, I've done the putting them into the smoothie and the kids have never known. So that's a good thing. Uh, my daughter did try to eat one. and <laughs> She was like, this is nasty, mom. This is really sour. So don't eat them plain. Um, but you can give them away. Give them to friends. People saw them, you know. It's it's a good ha it's a good problem to have, but okay. So this is now milk kefir. It's thicker. It's not a yogurt. This, a lot of people will say this is a drinkable yogurt. Um, it is thicker than milk, and um, it's definitely not like a spoonable yogurt. It's definitely thinner than that. Um, so I don't know if you can tell. It it is thick. Um, okay. So, I've got mine in my half uh, gallon mason jar. Now, the reason I put the, um, the strawberries in there is to do a second ferment. So, a second ferment, if I were to drink this right now, it would be fine, but it would be a little bit, a lot tart, okay? It would be tart. So, if you like that, then this is totally fine. If you don't mind having that really tart flavor, if that is something that your body craves, then totally drink this, okay? But if it's something that you think might be a little bit difficult to, to swallow, um, then do a second ferment. You can put fruit in it. You can put like orange peels. I've been putting frozen strawberries just a little bit, not much. Um, I've been putting frozen blueberries in there. I've done a peach before. Um, so just some type of fruit, just a little bit. It doesn't need much. And then the active kefir is going to continue to feed on that fruit. The fruit is like a food source. And during that second ferment for like the next hour is how long I leave this out again for a second ferment. I just leave it on my counter for another hour. Um, it will help to make that tartness go away. And um, I've tried it after an hour and I've drunk it just completely plain with no sweetener, no berries, no nothing. And I've actually enjoyed it. it. For me, it was pretty, pretty good. I'm not saying I would drink it on the regular like that, 
but I definitely could drink it like that. So now this is done, okay? And I'm just going, I have my strawberry pieces in here and I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to put a lid on it. Um, make sure it's dry. Just do the dishes. Um, so I'm gonna put my lid on it and let it sit on my counter for an hour and then I'm just gonna pop it in the fridge. Now with the fruit, you can um, go ahead and add it to your smoothie in the morning. Um, I've done that, I've, I've gone ahead and eaten the blueberries along with my drink. So the fruit is totally fine to consume. All right, so this is gonna sit on the counter. Now, this jar, no I did not wash it. Yes, I have reused it. This has been used probably for about a week. Um, and it's totally fine to keep using the same jar for your kefir um, to ferment for up to, I've heard some people have used it up to a month. So I'm not gonna worry about washing this. Okay, so now I have my skim milk. Again, you can use any milk that you choose. Um, I just use skim because calories. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. It's the calories and the fat. If I'm drinking a lot of kefir, I don't want to be adding a ton of unnecessary uh, calories to my diet. Um, but if you don't have to worry about that, go for the whole milk, man. All right, so here's the skim milk. All right, and I just get this from the store. Um, when I go through as much kefir as our family has been going through, I'm not gonna waste my raw milk on that. Um, the raw milk, it doesn't really make as much of a difference to it because the raw milk itself already has a ton of extra good uh, vitamins and bacteria and everything. So if you do get raw milk, I would not waste the kefir on the raw milk. Um, just get regular milk that is actually going to benefit from the key for doing its fermenting thing. All right, so I just poured it right into my original jar. I have my kefir grains in here. And let me try and get my lid on right. Just tie it, put it on real loose, okay? Because remember, it is a fermented drink. You don't want it real tight because then all the gases from the fermenting is going to get trapped inside there and you don't want that. All right, so I'm just gonna put this on my shelf and that's it. You don't have to stir it. You don't have to think about it for the next 24 hours. So around eight o'clock tomorrow night, I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to strain it and then I'm going to put it in a jar like this. I could even put it in the same jar as this, which is honestly probably gonna happen. Um, so I'm gonna put it in this jar. I'm gonna strain, do the, the whole straining thing, put it in the jar, and then I'm going to start the process all over again. Put my milk kefir grains into my jar, back into my original jar, fill it with whatever milk I choose, put the lid on loosely, and leave it set for another 24 hours. And you just keep doing that. And eventually, if you have too many grains, um, if you want, you can kind of like put them to sleep in the fridge. So if there's ever a time when you're going on vacation or you just have too much to do to even worry about making kefir, you can put your milk kefir grains in a jar filled with milk um, so they have something to continue to eat and put them in the fridge and the process will slow down so much that you only have to really check on them once a week. And then whenever you have a chance to get back into kefir making, you just pull it out and start the process over again. Um, let me put this away. Um, so that's it. And this is gonna be a whole health, um, you're just taking care of your health. Apparently everything starts in the gut. So if you heal your gut, the rest of you is gonna follow. And of course, I mean, you don't wanna feed yourself 
bad stuff. You don't want to continue to put junk into your body if you're trying to heal yourself. Um, so of course you're going to want to feed yourself good food and exercise and, and move your body and, and do all of that stuff. But healing your gut is an integral part of the, the whole health, taking care of your health uh, journey. So um, I just wanted to share that with you. We're loving this and I think it's so, so important. It has been wonderful for our family and I'm going to continue doing it. And I am hoping that you get interested, start doing your own research if you want to. Don't take my word for everything. Do your own research and look into this. Um, and then go ahead and find yourself some kefir grains and start making some stupid simple uh, milk kefir and feeding your gut. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a enjoyable time. <laughs> I hope that you come back, hit the like button, share this video and uh, subscribe and I will see you on the next one. Have a good night. Bye.